Okay. So next up is the Up All Night Alpha Demo. Is it a Windows one? Yeah, it's a Windows one. actually have to pull open my sked game game jams schedule because i'm just not like realizing ah avast i hate you i'm just not realizing i'm like oh, there it goes it's gonna be our because you should be able to find an images folder in the edl file Oh, yeah, here it is. This is the asset ending. I told you, it's hella cute. What's this? <laughs> yeah. The Doki Doki is fuck, it is. I love the fucking snakes. Also, the snakes all have their own name. And also, hold up. Wait, where'd it go? Did I fucking close it? I'm not great at this. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold the fuck on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Not only do they all have their own names... But, even better, they all have, where is it, where is it, I know it's somewhere in here, it's gotta be, it was, it was the other SF CG, where is it, they all have hats, <laughs> Which was cute as hell. <laughs> I love it. I, I, it was enough to make me wonder whether Morag was actually not best girl after all or not. Because Morag was really cute and really fun, but I mean, Aseth was really fun too. Okay, right off the bat, <clears throat> this game doesn't have a full screen option, which bothers me. It might midway through though, because I was able to access a full screen option once we got into game in the other one that was made in this um, platform. So we'll see what happens. Uh, wait, really? There's literally not a menu. Oof. Oh, wait, here? Full screen, there it goes. We found it. We found it after all. It 
was a long drive, but we made it. You feeling okay, sweetie? I'm assuming Nick is our MC, so we're just gonna roll with it. And if he's not, well... Fuck me, right? I told you I'm fine. I just want to lie down. You go do whatever. The art is good. That is one of the main reasons this one was in my shortlist. My mom looked out the cabin window and went quiet. She looks disappointed. She was talking nonstop about the mountain village the whole drive up. Look, why don't you go back to the town and look around? I'll unpack and watch a movie or something. She hesitated and a worried expression crossed her face. Why does she have to keep looking at me like that? It's been four months. I don't know. You haven't been alone since... Stop being like that. I told you I'm fine. Just go see the town. It's, it seems like kind of you're like you're the kind of thing. But Nick, I'm fine. I just want to be alone. Okay, maybe that wasn't entirely true. I think I really just wanted a break from the total absolute pity she kept sending my way. She hesitated then sighed, the worry shifting to resignation. Good, at least she wasn't pitying me anymore. If you're sure. We're only here for a week. Go have a good time. I ushered her out the door, and after we unloaded all the luggage, she drove back down the road. Good, now I can finally be alone. Good, foe. Get comfy. Like I wanted. I think it was too harsh on my voice doing core mix. Which is weird, because usually that voice isn't hard for me, so I'm not sure what's going on. <clears throat> I put my stuff away and spent a few hours playing games on the phone. No cell service, though. This sucks. Not like I, not like there's anyone I want, I'd want to call anyway. It was starting to get late, and my mom still hadn't returned. She got eaten by a Wendigo. Good luck, my dude. She called me a few hours ago on that cabin phone, just had to tell me all about the crummy little stores in town. She probably got distracted with all the shopping. Shit, it's getting pretty loud out there. I pulled the curtain aside. A snowstorm. Crap. I hope she wasn't driving back when this hit. Definitely eaten by a Wendigo. The phone? I picked up the receiver. Nick, I'm so sorry. She sounds upset. Did something... What's wrong? Are you hurt? What? No, no. I was still in town looking around when this huge snowstorm hit. <clears throat> no, 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 no. You're thinking of uh, Anasazi that we don't say the other name for. Wendigos are the cannibals. Those are the fun ones. Okay, actually, no, the Anasazi are the really fun ones. They're the ones you can't kill. So. There's an officer here saying the roads are closed. Probably until at least tomorrow night. I'm gonna have to stay over at the motel tonight. Pretty silly that I left my luggage at the cabin, huh? Huh. Huh. Yes. She laughed, but there was definitely a panicked edge to it. <gasps> you guys know what this means? We can wear our mom's underwear. And her dresses. Because she's stuck in town and left all her clothes here. It's perfect. We don't ever get to cross-dress freely. Jeez, you made it sound like you were dying when you called. Look, just get some rest. I'll see you in the morning. My heart was pounding up near the back of my throat because I was so excited about wearing my mom's clothes. <laughs> At least she isn't hurt. I can deal with sleeping alone for the night. I just wish she didn't worry so much. All I can think of was her rushing into my hospital room four months ago. I never wanted to see her like that again. 
really. I'll be fine. Will you really be okay for all night? I told you already I can handle it. I'm 18. I've graduated. I'm not a little kid or anything. Just... Just don't drive up until the road is safe. My voice cracked a little. Crap. I have to keep it together. If she does something stupid and gets hurt, rushing back because of me. Okay, I'll wait until it's safe. I'm so sorry, honey. You're stuck out there alone after I talked you into coming up here. I never should have taken you on such a long drive. Nick? Sorry, I just tripped over the chair. Wasn't paying attention. We just bashed our little toe into the... <laughs> okay, just remember the medication is in the suitcase if you need. The line went dead. Mom, you there? Shit. Great. She probably thinks I hung up on her. I tried to call back. Nothing. No dial tone. No static. Nothing. Well, isn't this going to be a great trip? The next few hours pass more fitfully than the first few had. Why did she have to pick such a crappy cabin? The phone doesn't even work now, and the way it just went dead. I couldn't call for help that day either. My cell phone was laying on the rocky ground in shattered pieces, reduced to a useless hunk of plastic and glass. I tried to use it anyway, but the screen wouldn't even turn on. Calm down, it was just a storm that knocked a pole down or something. Okay, so here is my current operating theory. He was in a car accident with his dad. His dad didn't survive. That's why he is, he, it's only him with his mom up here. And that's why his mom is like over, being overly protective about him and he made the comment about not wanting to take him on long drives. And hence the destroyed phone on the asphalt. That's my current operating theory. I should just be glad the power is on. Anyway, this isn't anything like that time. Yeah, I don't think opening the door is a good a good call here. I think uh, I think closing the blinds and go hiding under the blanket is probably our best option at this point. What the hell? The door? If she did something stupid like drive back before the road was safe, I got up to answer it. I threw the door open, expecting to see my mom's shocked face. It wasn't her. Some guy around my age was standing there, his fist raised up in front of my face like he was about to knock again. His eyes went a little wide and he lowered his arms to his side. Oh no. The antagonist is hot. Oh man, this is super weird. There is no way in fucking hell this dude is is aligned good. <laughs> but just in case apologies if I woke you I was just checking up on all the guests you would be oh I'm Nick um who are you he extended his hand out towards me apologies again I asked your name and didn't give mine I'm Felix no, you're fucking not. <laughs> the corners of his lips twitched, and he lifted his he tilted his head to the side, a piece of dark hair falling over his left eye. My father owns the cabins out here, but he's out of town right now. He wanted me to make sure everyone's alright, what with the bears and the garbage last night and the storm tonight. His hand was still extended out towards me. I know better. Fuck it, shake his hand. 
I reached out and shook his hand. His grip was firm and his fingers cold. I wonder why he's come by so late. He must be pretty cold. He doesn't have a jacket. Oh yeah, Nick, as a side note, something you probably didn't learn. Psychopaths can't feel temperature differences. Mm -mm. Do you want to come in and warm up? It's pretty cold out there. You don't mind? I did forget my jacket. Don't know what I was thinking, really. Is there anything you need to make your stay more comfortable? Actually, yeah, the phone went out earlier. Do you want me to take a look? He gestured to the phone on the nightstand. My mom's been stuck in town. She's probably been trying to call. Yeah, come in and take a look. Maybe you can fix it? I moved out of the way so we could come in. He smiled at me as he stepped inside and went to check out the phone. I fiddled with my cell phone, eyeing the empty reception bars. Well, at least I downloaded a couple of offline games, so I have something to do to pass the time. But unfortunately, I can't play Genshin Impact. <laughs> I wish there was reception up here. It's weird having to use one of these old phones. The price of isolation, I suppose. Well, the phone looks fine. There must be something wrong with the line. It'll probably be out until someone can come up here and do repairs. Well, crap. So much for that. I guess I can't call her back, then. Oh, did you come here with your girlfriend? Ugh, no, definitely not. It's my mom. She got stuck out of town because of the storm. Congratulations, dipshit. You just told a perfect stranger who is creepy as hell that you're here alone. that button? No, is it that button? Is it this button? That's the button I was looking for. No girlfriend, then. Felix smiled again and raised an eyebrow. We locked eyes and there was a strange intensity in his look. What's with this guy? Why is he acting, asking me something like that? No, I don't... I tried to push Bree's face out of my thoughts and a wave of nausea washed over me. Maybe it's not his dad who's dead. Maybe his dad has just never been part of his life and his girlfriend died. No, I never actually asked her out. She was never my girlfriend. Okay, well, that pretty much sums that up. Brakes shrieked, then went silent as the wheels lost traction and left the road. We were tumbling down the embankment, everything spinning in slow motion. Bree was there somewhere. The back. Tyler was up front. I think Bree might have been screaming, but the blood was pounding so loudly in my ears. Wrong? Everything is wrong. Everything's been wrong since. I felt an arm slip around my waist. Bree? No, no, she was in the back seat. And there were hands on my shoulders now, shaking me back and forth. I could hear someone calling from a distance. Nick, what's wrong? My eyes slid back into focus and I found myself sitting on the couch. Shit, I had a flashback. I thought it was over those. I was covered in cold sweat and bile was rising in the back of my throat. My leg was throbbing and my neck ached. No, don't think about it. I'm fine. I'm going to be fine. Nothing. Just, uh, just tired. Long drive, you know? Must have fallen asleep on my feet or something. I rubbed at my leg and winced before fanning a yawn. Yes, yes. Anyone would be tired after a drive like that. I'll call in a technician once the road is cleared. I stood up and almost immediately the dizziness hit again. Felix opened the front door. Please leave. I think I might pass out or maybe have another one of those things. I did not need this guy to watch that again. Sucks you couldn't fix it, but thanks for trying. Felix turned toward me and gave me a, gave a shallow bow, finishing it off with a twirl of his hand. His eyes met mine again. It really feels like he's looking into the back of my skull. I shivered, the cold wind blowing over me from the open door. It was good to meet you, Nick. It's lonely up here. Perhaps we can spend more time together once you're settled in. There's something interesting about you. Without waiting for my reply, he slipped out into the moonlit night. 
In the distance, the thunder of the storm still echoed. <laughs> That's unusual. Not impossible, because I've heard it, and it's the most terrifying thing you you can hear. It's like of all the sounds that are freaky deaky Dutch that I've heard in my life, like including the sound of a tornado being within a hundred yards of me. The creepiest one is the sound of thunder during a snowstorm. It's pretty late now. Maybe I should watch TV. At least there's still power. When I turned on the TV, some old horror movie was playing. There was a woman screaming, covered in blood as she ran down a dark tunnel. Something was creeping behind her, claws dragging along a stone cavern as it tracked her down. Yeah, no thanks. That wasn't foreshadowing or anything. I changed the channel to some late night infomercial for some weird fancy blender. Perfect, I couldn't stay awake even if I tried with this boring thing on. I fell asleep to that, the sounds of chopping and blending on the small set more comforting than the thoughts that would have come floating up in that awful silence. The dreams came anyway. No, I need to get out of here. I was rolling, my body snapping from side to side as the car crunched down the embankment. Why is this always the start of the dream? It wasn't the start of that night. I could hear the brakes squeal when I slammed them down, then their scream went silent when the tires lost the road. Yeah, that's what happened first, except I'm still rolling right now. That's not right. <clears throat> Their eyes were on me, gaze worming up my spine. Breeze behind me. Tyler's in the front passenger seat. Don't look. Don't look. Instead, I stared fixedly at the bloody crimson rivulets dripping down the dash. There were strips of flesh and torn hair pinched in the starburst crack in the windshield where Tyler's head had hit. Why did you do it? I didn't mean to. Why weren't you looking up? I'm sorry. Look at me now. I, I can't. Why didn't you die? I woke up shuddering and coated in chilly sweat that rolled down my forehead and into my eyes. A groan escaped my lips and I pressed my palms into my closed eyes until I saw stars. I wish I could stop those dreams. At least I won't be alone again tonight. It was light outside now and the TV was still on. The morning news was playing now. Quite the storm we had last night. The pause up to Aspen Lodge has been closed until the city can plow it. Hope you vacationers have a cozy fire and a book because it's going to be at least another night before it's clear. I groaned again. That was not the sort of news I wanted to hear, not at all. Never mind, then. I guess it's another day alone. No reason to wait around here, then. Might as well go out and get some air. Maybe I'll run into that guy. What was his name? Felix? Or maybe I'll get lucky and get mauled by that bear. I won't have any nightmares. The more Any more nightmares, then. <laughs> Big fucking mood, Nick. Must have snowed even more at some point during the night, since I didn't see any footprints leading up to or leaving the cabin from Felix's visit. I trudged around the side of the house, the bright white snow making me squint. There was a trail nearby with a frozen pond about three miles away that my mom had visit wanted to visit. I guess I could go check it out and let her know if it's worth her time. The air was strangely still after the harsh winds from the night before and made everything feel less real. The trees are actually pretty beautiful out here. The bark is almost as white as the snow. It kind of looks like some sort of fantasy show or something. Then I saw it. A blossom of red among the endless white. The smear was so crimson bright that it gleamed like a beacon. I couldn't look away. What is it, a person? Get in your votes now, boys and girls. Monster? Person? Dead animal? Or hallucination? After I got closer, I could see three hooves poking out of the layer of fresh snow. I guess that's cheating. <laughs> a deer, maybe? Why the hell did I think that it'd be a dead person? Maybe there really is a bear around here.
Oh, gross. What the hell is that? What the? The words cut through the silence and made me jump. Also, hello. The words cut... A girl? She was staring at the deer corpse, her expression somewhere caught between disgust and fascination. You scared me. I didn't hear you come up. What are you doing out here? The girl gave me an annoyed look. Uh, going for a walk? Looks like you were doing the same thing. Or were y'all looking for dead stuff? That'd be pretty weird. Respond. What the? No, I was not trying to find a dead deer. Damn it, my face is getting red. Gotta keep it cool. Some guy last night told me there was a bear around, so I thought I'd take a look. Uh, what's your name, anyway? Oh, name's Grayson. And man, that sounds like something fun. A real live bear, huh? He ate that critter pretty damn good, didn't he? Uh, yeah, I guess. If ripping something's guts open is, uh, good. I'm Nick, by the way. I cleared my throat. Interesting. So, uh, you on vacation out here, too? I guess you could say that, if being stuck out in the middle of nothing for three years counts as a vacation. You want to look at that deer now? Sure, might as well. Nothing else up to do up here, right? I found myself grinning, which was weird since I was standing over a deer corpse. Uh, I mean... I can see several reasons to be grinning, I'm just saying. You're out right about that. What you want to look at first? Look at the head. The neck looked as if it had been crushed between a set of powerful jaws. That's not a bear. Ugh. I s I still can't believe you guys drove all the way out here to pick me up. Don't look. Mm. Don't look at me. He's the one who wanted to come get you. Well, I mean, I invited you to the party, so I figured you know. Are you blushing? Shut up. You're definitely red. They were both laughing, and I felt myself blushing harder. Oh, Nick. I told you to shut up. No, the road. Shit. A shadow had darted out from the side of the road. Slender-hoofed legs stood frozen in surprise, shocked eyes glowing green in the glare of the headlights. I swerved. Ladies and gentlemen, for future reference, if you're ever driving somewhere that has wild animals that frequently jump out in front of the road, this right here is why you don't ever fucking swerve. Hit it head on. The eyes of the doe in front of me weren't gleaming with any light at all. They were gray and lifeless. The deer's mouth was hanging open slightly and its tongue had lolled out. It must have been panting on the ground as it died. Hey, buddy, you okay? Nick? Grayson waved her hand in front of my face, trying to snap me out of what must have been a very obvious daze. Sorry, I was thinking about something. Not a problem, don't worry about it. Pretty freaky how something crushed its neck, huh? Some guy said there was a bear? Yeah, some guy came by last night and said something about a bear getting into the garbage. I guess it got into more than that. It did not, that is not how bears hunt. I gestured grimly at the dead deer. You're in the cabins? Yeah, it's just over there. pointed back toward the tip of a cabin roof still visible in the distance. Grayson nodded and peered over at the deer, her eyebrows furrowed in thought. Let's look at the snow, or brush away the snow. I could see more red under the lighter coating of snow that covered the deer's torso. 
must have been killed after the heaviest part of the storm had passed or it would have been more buried. I brushed the snow away. There was a deep frozen pool of blood under the deer's exposed stomach. Viscera and organs trailed out into that congealed pool. The blood had overflowed into a second more shallow indentation in the ground. Ugh. Uh, looks like a big paw print frozen in blood. Aren't bear paws pretty wide? Looks more like a giant dog print. No, that's way too big to be a dog. Gotta be a bear. Poor thing. I wonder if it was still alive when its guts were ripped out. Well, don't you just sound like the life of the party? I don't go to parties anymore. She rolled her eyes, hands placed firmly on her hips. Way to be a downer. I ignored her and bent down again to look at the body. I know she's curious, but this is making me feel sick. Hey, I think I've had enough of this. Why don't we do something else? Sure, why not? What you wanna do? What should we do? Maybe I should invite her back to my cabin? No, wait, that's super weird. I just freaking met her. Grayson wandered off while I was thinking, then perked up and called back to me. Oh, look, my prince. Wanna follow him and see what else the bear got up to? That seems like an awful idea. Um, not really. What if there's another dead animal? I don't know if... She came over and grabbed my hand, pulling me over towards the tracks she had found. Woof. Woof. 